All right. Testing. One, two, one, two. Audio, audio. It looks like it's working. One, two. Testing. One, two. Okay. It looks like I have a screen. Hello, my friends. This is Jerry D. in Tennessee. I've uh, been trying to think out how I'm going to do this, but um, here I am on the beach at Sunset Cafe, Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, let's see what we can do. I, I, I recently, um, well, actually, it's been a while, I, I installed the Python version of the E-Trade API and give a demonstration of it. Somebody had asked me about the Node.js. They released it, and... Um, I kept calling support and the regular support line is for like normal people that want to trade and they're having issues maybe figuring out how to make a, an order to buy stock or to sell stock or they're wanting to do options or something or uh, you know they have a question about trading stock or that maybe they locked their self out of their account they forgot their password they want them to reset a password or something like it that's what the main support line is all about so, um, what you have to do to reset your, if you have, um, a, if you have requested a set of keys from the E-Trade website, then the, um, you have to, you have to send them a, um, a encrypted message, a secured message from within your account. You have to log into your account. Go on your messages and send them an electronic message telling them that you would like to have the, um, the electronic keys reset. I didn't realize that. And I finally, after several phone calls, uh, I finally got a hold of a lady. Uh, she was very, very nice. And uh, she said, you know, she said, let me put you on hold for a minute. She said, I'm going to contact the developers. She said, I... Uh, uh, your your first calls that you made they probably were new people they had no idea who to contact their manager uh because and, and mainly it's probably because um there's been a lot of changes at e-trade but anyway they uh, she said they probably didn't know who they needed to talk to and it's just slipped through the cracks and she said i know i know exactly hold on let me let me put you on hold i'll make a phone call and we'll get you set up so she put me on hold. She told me, she said, E-Trade will be sending you an electronic message. It will not be to your email. It will be within the E-Trade e system. You're through your account. You'll get a notification uh, about the same as uh, your, um, your um, notification when an order goes through, saying that you, your order to purchase so many shares of stock at this price has, has been processed or... Um, or you know you have a sale order and it automatically goes and it so it sells as soon as you get the get the price as soon as the price hits uh, the sales your order sitting there waiting for the price to hit and then it automatically executes you'll get a message saying that and it, you get a message sent to your phone and your email saying that you have a a message within the E-Trade system so you log into your account you get the message and uh, anyway, they sent me a message. They, uh, they, they said, can you reply to this message with your API, your current API keys, and repeat the request that you'd like to make, and we will take care of it. And I just sent them my old API keys. I, uh, I told them, um, you know, I'd like to, my, my API key expired. And I would like to renew it so I can do a demo. I do YouTube videos, and I want to do a YouTube video and um, give a demonstration of your API in, in action, in use. So, um, they reset my keys, and um, we got that out. We got that out of the way. The reason, well. I don't know how long, I don't know what's going to happen with all this. They, they're having a lot of change. They've had a lot of changes. Uh, the interface on E-Trade's not changed, but uh, let me let me go back here to, uh, and I talked about this in a previous video. Let's go back over here. So, Morgan Stanley 
purchased E-Trade back in October 2nd, 2020. That was on my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Anyway, <laughs> I just noticed that. Anyway, um, so they, they, Morgan Stanley purchased E-Trade. Okay, so that was news. That was on Bloomberg. Uh, most of the outlets talked about it. Um, and I'll put a I'll put a link to this. I don't know that you'll be interested. You might want to read it. But then, then, um, in twenty twenty one, April twenty 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 one, Morgan's there this come out. Morgan Stanley sells recently acquired E Trade custody unit to Axos. So. I don't know if it's part of the company or just, a, you know, maybe a section, a section. But they turn around and sold it. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm like, I look back at this and I look, I like think, wow, you know, I wonder if management back a year or so ago, back in October, before October, if they had realized that Morgan Stanley would go and sell this off for $55 million. <laughs> Anyway, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but you know that's just business. That's just business. So here's here's the thing. Uh I don't know if this stuff will change. Okay. So I would suggest that um you go out. If you're gonna do this, go out. I mean, if this if it's been a while for my uh since I've made the video when you're just watching this after the fact and it's maybe a year, two, three maybe six months, I would go out and make sure that you download the latest, latest version and look at the website, see what changed, okay, before um, you proceed. There's going to be some documentation. If you if you click on um, you click on this download now, there's an enode client.zip that will download, and you can use like 7-zip to, uh, to unzip the zip file. So uh, I'm going to put a link to uh, Node.js. This is going to be straight to the Node.js.org site, so you don't have to do a Google search. I'm going to put that information in my um, description. As always, I like to put links to everything that I get out there. I'm going to add the uh, commands I'm going to use because there's going to be there's going to be some things come up while you're doing the installation. I've done this on another machine because I wanted to do a test run just to see how it would go. Now another thing, another thing when you download it, uh, let me bring this over here. So under the root, I've dropped this under the root, no D trade client, I have unzipped it there. Under the root of this folder, node e, e trade node client, there will be a config INI. You add your, what do they call it? Um, your API key and your secret, which is like a password or a token. Um, it just validates who you are. This application will take you to the login and you will have to uh, log into your E-Trade account. So, but this config INI, what you will do, you will copy, there's a spot in the INI file where you populate the uh, API key and the secret, and it's clearly marked as their variables that the inf that the program is going to read in. It, so it's pretty straightforward where you plug it in. <clears throat> and most people, if you're a developer, you're going to know how to do this anyway. Uh, you're going to you're going to this is going to be familiar to you. People that's not developers aren't going to be quite familiar with this. So um, if if Somebody's trying. I, I may do another video and go in a little more detail. I don't want to show my API key. I mainly want to install it, go through installing Node.js, and I want to run it. And that's the focus of this video. But now, um, after you after you update the config, or actually you can take and keep this file the way it is and copy it under the bin for this to run correctly and and it's not intuitive there's no instructions to tell you to do this so that's one of the reasons i'm making this video because a lot of their stuff they don't have an instruction manual on how to get this installed or how to run it so 
you copy this config INI under the BIN directory. You go to another level and go under the BIN under the eTrade node client folder. And the uh, and this is after you populate it with your uh, your API key and your your secret or password, what, however you want to think of it. Um, the secret is pretty much a password, and then the the API key just identifies you and your ties you to your account. So there's going to be a two-step process once you run this thing. Let me move this back out of the way. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to download. I'm going to download version 16.16 OLTS. And if you're using Chrome, which that's, that's the browser I'm in right now, you'll see it down here at the bottom. It'll show the download. Double click that and you can run it. Or it's going to be under your uh, downloads folder. If you go into your file explorer, just go to the downloads and run it from that. So here's the Node.js setup wizard. Uh, accept the terms. It's not going to install if you don't accept the terms. So. And I'm not going to bore you with the contents of the terms. Uh, it's going to tell you it's going to install it under program files, Node.js. So I think everything's going to default to run. Yeah, I think anything, if you say, will be installed on local hard drive. I think it defaults to install everything. It should. It looks like it is going to. So let's go click next. Now, it's going to need to install some extra stuff. So this is not going to be some spyware or anything like this. This is some more developer stuff that it's going to want to install. So it says some NPM modules need to be compiled with C, C++ when installing. If you want to be able to install such modules, some tools, Python, and Visual Studio build tools need to be installed. So I click automatically install the necessary tools. Note that this will also install Chocolatey. Chocolatey is an installer. The script will pop up in a new window and after this and after the installer complete, installation completes. Ugh, I'm getting tongue tied. Alternate Alternatively, follow the instructions at GitHub Node.js Node-GYP pound on Windows to install the dependencies yourself. I'm just going to let it automatically install the dependencies. Why go through the trouble of doing it when this is going to do it for you? So Chocolate D will take care of that kind of stuff. So uh, this is just saying, you know, it's going to make it's going to make changes, and you can go back and change any of the configurations. We're going to leave it like it is. I'm going to install on all the extras. We'll let this thing run. So, um, while that's running, there we go. Yes, so go ahead and tell it. Yes, I want to make changes. So, Node.js has been fully installed, so finish. All right, so uh, tools for Node.js. This script will install Python and Visual Studio build tools necessary. So that was a Visual Studio. Chocolatey is a Visual Studio um, thing. So uh, it's going to be necessary to compile Node.js native modules. No, note that Chocolatey and required Windows updates will also be installed. This will require about three gigabytes of free disk space plus any space necessary to install Windows updates. This 
will take a minute to run. All right, so I'm going to hit enter or the return key, whatever you want to call it. Do I need to click on it? I think I lost focus. I think it paused for a while when this last time this happened. <sighs> It's running behind the scenes. Okay, maybe maybe enter or return is not the right key. The space bar seemed to have done something. So Chocolately has implemented security safeguards, protect community militia, pirated software. All right. So it's just warning you. So it's going to install PowerShell. PowerShell uh, script. So uh, Python, Visual C, Reader Distribution, Code, Chocolatey Core Extensions, and then it applied updates, and uh, it's doing a lot of work behind the scenes. <clears throat> no, a hacker has not taken over my machine. <laughs> Might make somebody nervous though if they've not done any of this kind of thing. But I'm an IT guy, and this is uh, this is some of the stuff that uh, I deal with uh, installing software. So are we done yet? No, it's still installing. So it's downloading from the Visual Studio at Microsoft.com. Go to full screen. I want to go through this whole process. That way you won't be wondering, well, am I doing this right or not? Or, you know, uh, if if you're a, a, a Node.js developer, you probably have done this multiple times. If you're a seasoned developer that, uh, that uh, works in Node.js. So we're installing Visual Studio 2019 build tools. Now what Joe Node.js is, uh, is um, Node.js was the developed it's actually it's a clone of the uh, JavaScript uh, interpreter used in um, Google, 
called V8. Or at least that, that's the original code. It may, it may have my, this probably progressed past that, but originally it was based off of um, Google's JavaScript interpreter that's in the browser called V8. So I'm not going to go into uh, much of the history. I mean, if you're really interested and want to learn about it, there's plenty of stuff out there for you to read. If you if you go and buy a book on writing uh, Node.js code so you can play around with this API, I'm sure the history of Node.js is probably going to be in the introduction. So uh, most of the authors will include like a, a little bit of the history about the language before they get you started in writing code. I believe it's still rolling. So I'm not sure that I need that. No, it's still doing something. It's working on something. It's been a couple of weeks since I went through this and so I have a actually I have a, a, a um job at the university that keeps me busy so I did a test run on this like I said on a laptop everything appeared to work after they reinstated my my uh, sandbox key so it runs fine on my laptop so my task today I'm going to get it running on this desktop I hear the drive working, so I don't think there'd be anything in my Unreal Engine. I have Unreal Engine installed for um, playing around with developing games. Now that would be a thought. Create a game where you can play around like you're, you're um, trading stocks. That'd be a good way to practice. I'm surprised somebody's not done. Well, that's called um, paper trading. <laughs> if you go into E-Trade, look up paper trading, and uh, you, they give you a hundred thousand dollars. It's it's fake money. It's not a real. It's not a real account. It's a fake account. It's a um, Almost like what you're going to be doing with the with the sandbox account with um, this API, but um, you have a you have an account a, a, a paper trading account of a hundred thousand dollars, and you can trade options. You can just buy sell stocks. You can you can practice buying and selling stocks before you actually use use your money. It's a very very I, it's. I highly recommend you try and paper trading if you've not traded in stocks and you're just getting into this, getting into um, OTC or what have you, get into, uh, go into the paper trading section and just play around with fake money, play money and see how you do. Buy and, you know, uh, watch, see if you can make some money, see if you lose it. You can reset it. There's, uh, there's an option. There should be a link on the uh, paper trading uh, section where you can reset it back to $100,000 and start over again if you if you lose it all, if you blow it all. And if you if you try options, uh, yeah, you could probably go through your 100,000 pretty quick. So my laptop's a little little faster than this and it's uh 
it's got twice as much memory. So I'm thinking this thing's just a little slower than my laptop. My laptop was pretty fast. It's 32 gig box with the two terabyte hard drive, SSD drive on it. That makes a difference. This this one has um, this one has mechanical drives on it. So it's a it's an Alien Aurora. But it's got it's got mechanical drive, so it's not gonna be quite as fast. It's pretty fast for for a game machine once you get it up and running. But uh, this is this thing's probably down still downloading Microsoft uh, resources behind the scenes, installing stuff, kind of like applying an update when it's update. I vaguely remember this era coming up too. Could not update channel. And I don't I'm not sure that that's important. So it's done, it's done a lot of stuff. Download request. So it says it downloaded 16. Let's just be a little more patient with it. And actually, I may not need that. I may not need that to finish, but let's see. I'm gonna go to here. this All right, so this seems to be, let's bring this over here. So I could do a node dash dash version. And you can see I have version 16. Let's make, let's edit. Actually, let's go to properties. Let's make this a little small, larger. Um, font size, let's make font size 20. And let's go a little bigger. Let's go back to fonts, let's make it uh, 
24. That might be easier to see. All right. This is the, it's still working behind the scenes. I don't think I need all that though, because I'm not compiling. I'm going to run it. So let's let's go ahead and let that finish, and um, yeah, maybe I need to wait because I'm gonna have to. I want to have to run a couple, of, probably about six more installs. Looking at my notes. So let's give it a few more minutes. So I guess while that's installing, let's do this. Let's go to OTC Markets. Fan base. Can't remember what the ticker is. I did, and I did a video. I'm in the stock too. Let's go to Yahoo Finance Fan Base. Private company. Friendable. And, or say fan base stock. Dang, I'm just batting zero today. Friendable, friendable, friendable. Well, let's cheat. <laughs> let's cheat. Let's go to here. My channel. FDBL. Friendable. All right. So let's go to Friendable. FDBL. FDBL. Company profile. Is this what I want? New tab. So, the reason, the reason they have this kind of stuff out there, the APIs for this, and I, I showed this off in my previous video. Stock information. So, with an API, you can go and have a, like, a corporate account at uh, E-Trade. I'm so sure that... Um, some of the other brokerages, Fidelity and other other uh, brokers have the same kind of setup. You download the API and the person's building your website, downloads whatever software, if they're using Node.js, if they're using Python, if they're using Java, whatever the API for that language that they're using for the website, they can download that. And you can, you can actually make your site have display 
up-to-the-date prices of your stock. It looks like Friendable's up 20%. I don't, I've not looked at it today. But, um, so you can have live updates of your stock for your company is the main reason this API is out there. Or, or stocks to, pay, you know, companies like Stocks to Trade will go out and, and, and they'll run a report and, and go out and do a search for, um, for, you know, stocks that spiked over 10% for the day or whatever. You can do that and generate a list for people on a, on a web page. So that, it, that kind of stuff like that. Some people are, if you do searches, people should write in trading bots, which I do not recommend writing a trading bot. If you do, if you do write one, I would test, I would test, and then I would test because uh, that... I'd hate I'd hate to blow my own account because of a bug in the program. It can happen very quickly. So is this thing waiting on me? Maybe it was. Okay, it finished. All right. So where was I going to go with this? All right. So back to the screen so I've, uh, I've I've zipped this e trade no client file I've unzipped and let me go back let's go back to here to give you all this most most IP most IT people is going to know this anyway but anyway so um, I use 7 zip actually Windows will un 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 unpack it too but uh, 7 zip So you go to 7zip.org, there's the download page. I want to put the link for 7zip in the description. So you've got everything there. I, I don't get people that create these uh, YouTube videos and they're talking about how to do stuff and they don't give everybody the links on how to do what they're doing. Uh, I'd rather I'd rather give you all the information up front, but I, I installed the 64-bit because I have the 64-bit operating system. Anyway, anyway, so let's go back to this right here. So you have an API key, and um, and the secret it's like it's like your ID and your password to get into eTrade. So I'm going to run. Node, and then I should be able to say ET and tab, and that will be the uh, JS Node.js script to run. So I'm passing the script to Node, so Node will interpret it. So you have a live consumer key, which is your 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 real your live account with your real money. <laughs> so like I said before, you use stuff on this. I would test and test and test. And you could actually probably write the code to where instead of doing buys and sell orders, um, instead of making the calls, actually um, commit the orders. You could just log in a database what you're doing to verify that it's making the orders, especially if you're doing the trading bot. I would, I would log and I would test and test. and I mean, I would test. I mean... I wouldn't. I, I would be testing for like several months. I would be testing and testing. I'd be very cautious if you're writing a trading bot because I'd hate. I don't want to see anybody losing money, and I do not recommend writing a trading bot. But I know there's people out there that will probably do. It, and I'm telling you, do it at your own risk because it is as volatile as the stock market has been. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of people that's done videos writing trading bots. And they've lost money <laughs> doing it. So, and and if they made money, they didn't make a whole lot of money. So I don't know. I kind of like to have my little control. 
this might be a good way if you write yourself a little script where you can do a quick buy if you want to do a quick buy okay or a quick sell order just do it on the keyboard real fast you don't have to go into the, the site but anyway so i'm going to go into the sandbox which is the, the the development test account And this thing's going to log in. And this is um, just an agreement. This is saying, you know, you, you're going to be... Uh, you're going to be trading with your own stuff. And you're doing this at your own risk they don't guarantee you anything this is this is telling what you're going to be able to do you're going to do you can do uh you can tree let's let's blow this up a little bit so it's easier to read okay so you'll be able to retrieve account information list of accounts account type account balance info transaction details and more access is order previews place order functionality lists of orders cancel order functionality and more retrieves quote information option chains option expiry information and more access as user account alerts upon request from user so i'm going to accept this and now i have to paste this is like a two-factor verification okay so this will not continue until you and you can right click your mouse button and it will paste it right there and just hit the enter or return key and bam you're in the menu so it's interesting they must have fixed something because i had to go through i had to install a minimalist uh, a winston module an oauth module a promise module a debug module and a request module oh i know what happened i'm gonna put i'm gonna put the instructions for the you have to do an npm install install these because i'm running off the original directory i copied off of my laptop and it's already installed into that directory that's why i didn't get those messages so you will have some messages up it'll it'll look like an error but I'm going to put the um, NPM in install instructions for you to install each module as the errors come up. So I should have had I should have tried this with a clean state. I, I may a clean slate. I may do another video with the errors. I may I may um, unzip um, the um, vanilla version and show some errors that you might end up with. So, all right, let's go. Let's look at market quotes. So, I'm going to hit one. It asked me for a stock symbol. So, G O O G, Google. So, um, Google is saying that uh, this is. Um, Last price for five hundred seventy-seven dollars and fifty-one cents per share. The previous close was five seven seven fifty-one, which this is after arc. It's already nine twenty-three here in East Tennessee. Uh, the, there's a bid for uh, five seventy-four oh four. There's an ask for five seventy-nine seventy-three. So somebody's wanting five seventy-nine seventy-three, and somebody's saying, "No, I want to buy for five seventy-four oh four. So um, it's not showing the day's range because it's probably after hours. And this is this is the test. So let me let me let's exit out of this screen. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do another market quote. Let's go ahead market quotes one. So it doesn't matter if I hit T for AT and T. It's still giving me Google. <laughs> so so in the in the test environment, so what I'm showing you is the test environment is going to give you. Uh, you have a database that's got test data. So this is this is not live data that is feeding you this is the test to make sure your code is accessing the functions 
properly, the API calls properly. So it did not throw an error, so the code's good. So I can do uh, an account list, which is option two. So um, let's look at uh, uh, account number four. Check a balance. Looks like there's nothing in it. So let's go to two. Let's look at portfolio. <coughs> So, right now it's showing that I've got Microsoft, I've got uh, GLD, I've got BR. So, if I go and sell, let's go to three orders. Sell, quantity 10. So it's showing me that I have a RIMM order, I have ETFC, I have E E E R E E E. So um, nineteen boy, two have been there for a while. <laughs> Buy is open. Um, cancels all. Order type one cancels all. ETFC limit. Symbols ETFC. So, uh, four seventy nine or R I M M. Let's two. Let's cancel the order. Oh, okay. It's going to let me. Um, let's cancel number one. 479, the very top row, 11 from 1129, 1973. I wanted to buy five or our test environment. We have an order for five to buy five, and this it says it's been there since 1973. So I want to cancel the first one. Order is successfully canceled. So let's three go back. Let's look at the balance. Nothing. Let's look at orders again. Three. Apparently it kept it there. So it made the call. It didn't execute the order. It, it executed the call. And it didn't do anything. It's just... So the sandbox, the test data looks like it's not going to change. So don't be freaked out. If this is more, if you're testing out with it, the main thing is you don't want to get errors with the program. It's running. It didn't throw an error. So, okay. So three, let's go back. Um, two, portfolio, balance, portfolio. It looks like I gained something. Or it looks like I took a loss. It's changed a little bit, hasn't it? I was going to go see if I could. Let's see. Let's go back. Let's go hit four. Let's go back. Let's go to one. I was able to do a little more than this if I remember right in the Python version. So let's look the balance for one. Okay, so let's look at portfolio. BR go. Looks like it's the same thing. So go back. Four. So let's go to two. Balance. It's going to be empty again. 
which was the portfolio. I thought on the other one, on the Python, they had an option to sell, and they may not have that set up on this one. So you can't you can't sell what you're making. You know your key, your consumer key is working for the sandbox. It's the whole thing. So you have to tell them to activate activate your live key to work with your live account. And again, uh, I would test and test and test and test and make sure all the calls are working. I would go with small steps, maybe buy one share of a stock or something if you write a script to buy stock. Or if you take this structure and you use it for uh, production, your production live account, I would buy well, maybe just one share and make sure that goes through fine. And I'd sell at a certain price and make sure everything's working exactly the way you mean to do it before I do some real serious work with it. Um, but the main thing that most people use these things for, again, is uh, like I showed you on friend uh, fan base. And uh, I can get rid of this screen here. Actually, let's just jump back over. Friendable. Yeah, fan pass. Fan pass, excuse me. Friendable fan pass. So, most companies will download, they'll have a developer download the API and just use that to show the current stock price for their company stock. It's mainly, uh, it's just a standard thing. So, all right, so let's go to back to three, the orders. Let's see what preview order does. Oh, okay, let's, uh, let's do uh, one. Let's do a, a two, a limit order. Good for the day. Limit price. Um, I want to buy Google for two hundred dollars. Inner stock symbol G. Hold on. G. G. Buy. I want us to buy 10 of them, which would be $2,000. Good for day. Commission's going to be $6.99. Estimated total cost is undefined. Huh. Apparently, it didn't do the calculation for that, but preview ID is 1627181131. So, three, go back. Let's look at three orders. And it didn't make the call. If it did, it didn't do anything. It probably did make the call. I've not looked at the code. I'm not dug through it because there's a lot to it. There's a lot of files in that folder. So um, they've given you a framework. To play around with. Let's see. Looks like. Status price executed is one fifty. Two portfolio. Three orders. Yeah, I didn't create a new order. So it's, it's just throwing back what they've got programmed. This is, the data is not going to change when it's coming back. So I think the main thing, if you're playing around with the sandbox, is probably going to test the calls and make sure the calls don't throw any errors, that, you, that your code, code's not throwing any errors. You're probably going to have to go in and play around and test with your live account. Um, unless you can call them and get them, get them to, to somehow connect it with some... I, they probably... They probably would frown on doing that. 
I almost would think it would connect to a paper trading deal. It would work like paper trading, but I had the same issue with the, um, the Python. Didn't, um, you know, it's like the Google, The I had the same issue with looking for the symbols, looking the symbols up for the prices for uh, stocks, and Google's the only thing that would come back with the Python. So it's the same database that it's hitting. So, um, can I cancel four seven nine? Let's let's go and two cancel order. There's two of them sitting there. Looks like uh, order four seven five is executed. So I can cancel four seven nine, four seven seven. One cancels all order type. One cancels all force to buy. Quantity 100 of ETFC or RIMM. Let's try to cancel number two. Let's see what that does. All right, so I'm going to hit three, go back, look at portfolio. No, that's not what I want. I want the three orders. Let's look at orders. Order's still there. It didn't get rid of anything. So, the calls are just going to really return what they return. Um, again, you're not playing with real money. It'd be nice if, if E-Trade, if E-Trade's watching this, E-Trade, it'd be nice if you give somebody $100,000 and this would work just like paper trading where you could play with the API. That seems like that would be the right thing to do. But, um... It's just coming back with content. It's returning content on the display. So it just gives you something to display and when you place the calls to pull back just so your screen to verify that your code's working is what it's doing. So to do a real test, you'll have to hit some live. You'll hit your live account and maybe buy a small cheap stock or something and sell and whatever. So... I don't know if there's too many people that... There's some people out there, though, like I talked about. And I, again, I do not recommend that you try to write a, a, uh, a trading bot because there's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot of things that can happen and that you may not think of, that you may not be able to program for. This is probably a, a good deal for you to... Um, for you to um, write yourself a quick command line interface, you're at work, <laughs> you're a developer, you're trading stock, you're at work, you don't want somebody looking over your shoulder to see what you're doing, and it looks like you're writing code, you're working on code, you're in a command line, right? And if it's down small print, and they're like, just kind of glance down at the desk, they're not really going to be able to tell what you're doing. So, so it's not like you're up on the E-Trade site and you've got it up. And it, that's pretty obvious because it's got the E-Trade logo on it and everything. So, you know, that's another that's another use for this. You could go and you, you can, like, buy stocks real quick on the command line and enter what many shares, what the price is, and, and bam, bam, bam. It submits the order behind the scenes, and bam, you're, you know, you're there. So... It's just another way of accessing stock information. And like I said before, this is this is what companies use to do update current stock prices for their companies. This is how they get that to work on their websites. This is a this is a um, application program interface. And whether it be JSON, Python, or Java. You should be able to access it on the web to um, to um, update a um, a stock screen like FanPass is doing their stuff. This is exactly what FanPass is doing. Something like this, they've got a a corporate account with a brokerage, and they're hitting they're hitting a the service behind the scenes and they are keeping up to date their stock price in their web interface when this stock comes up it'll keep it current so anyway that was a quick and dirty 
there's uh, there's some more commands if you throw. I may do another video with just a code install without using this folder that I had. I just I just copied this folder because I already had my um, my API key configured in the uh, configuration file. I may I may do another video and do that from scratch, and that way I can work through the errors and show you how to. Um, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the commands for, for the installs that you write in the command line. It'll come back up to a command prompt. Let's go. Let's get out of this. Let's get out of this right here. Four. Go back. Five. Go back. Three. Exit should log me out. And CLS will clear the screen. And. Um, Yeah, I'm going to put the, um, so you'll come back to a command prompt like this, and you can say, like, uh, NP, npm install, and this will be in my comments. I'm, dropping, I'm going to drop this in the comments. Uh, minimus, minimus. And, yes, I actually typed it right. And you would do an npm install. I could do that, but it's going to tell me it's already installed. Okay, so it updated it. New minor version of npm. Okay, so it went ahead. It must have went and um, let's see if the node thing still works. Let's look. Node and trade client. Sandbox. Go back to this. Back to our accept screen. Give me a different. This is again, this is like two factor. Paste that in there, and I'm in. So it did not uninstall it. So I think what it did is updated it. <clears throat> it did. Now that I'm reading the the message here, um, I went from version eight dot one one dot o to eight dot one three dot two. So it upgraded is what it did. So it's three exit. So let's type in this others. Okay. So another thing you'll have to do would be a npm. Actually, I could do it like this. You can up arrow. No. Let's go the other direction. Okay. Yeah, up arrow or down arrow to get to it. So Minimus was the first thing that I ran. You can do um, NPM install Winston was another one that I received an error on. So let's see if it updates itself. It says it's up to date. It wants me to update NPM, but I'm not going to update NPM. Uh... I want to do, I'm going to up arrow. There's where I had my, when it brings up the Winston install command. And the next one I'm going to do OAuth. OAuth is authentication where it verifies when you, the when it sends the keys is encrypting when it talks to the server. So you have to have OAuth. So, Did it do anything? It said it was up to date right there. So it didn't do anything. So uh, let's up arrow again. Another one. And I'm again, this is going to be in the description. 
promise. There's another package you'll have to have. Looks like it was up to date. There's another one that you will need will be debug. NPM install debug. So it's up to date. And the last one is um, install request. R E U E S T. All these commands will be in the description. So that's up to debate. Up to date. Yeah, I'm tongue tied. So Minimist was the only one that was behind and it got upgraded. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, that's pretty much a dog and pony show on um, using Node.js to run the um, eTrade API. Again, I'm going to have links for the downloads in the description. Let's close this up. Close this up. 7-zip, did I add that? Yes, I added that. Okay, so 7-zip. Friendable. So I'm going to put the link to the stock information too. This, this sample screen I brought up so you can bring that up as well and OTC markets link ah oh, come on escape so I had those links down the bottom there for you too as well all right, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate you watching the, the, this demo. It's, it's pretty straightforward. The thing that will probably throw somebody for a loop if you've never done this kind of thing, if you're not a really an IT person, you just, just want, to, want to play around with this, um, you, really, you really want to get familiar with... Um, you might want to go out on YouTube and take a real quick Node.js uh, or watch a few Node.js videos if you've not worked with Node.js just to get a little bit of a feel with Node.js. So uh, LinkedIn also has, if, if you've got a LinkedIn account, LinkedIn's got some tutorials where you take a, a Node.js quick and dirty course to learn Node.js. But I'm sure there's plenty of people that have YouTube videos that you can watch as well that will be very informative. Uh, the main thing that will throw some people for a loop with starting this out, again, I'm going to repeat that uh, you need, to, you need when, you, when you put your, um, your API, your sandbox key, and your, API, your live key in, and your secret in the config file you need to move that file under you need to have a copy with the your that information my, egg, my legs itching hope i didn't get chiggers to get out with the dogs a while ago um sorry about that yeah you need to copy the config file move it to the bin directory it's the level up above where it needs to be. So it needs to be in the same um, the same folder. The same path right here. As I put mine on the C drive on eTrade node client, unzipped it. There's a bin directory under the node client directory. You need to you need to CD into that and you'll be good to go. And and have a copy of that file in that directory with your API keys. So request the keys off the website. The website again uh, developer.etrade.com Did I put that in here? Yes I did. And the Node.js download page too. So developer.etrade.com You will have to log in to request an API key So you just use your eTrade account, 
that you use for your brokerage account. Use that ID and password. Log in. Request the key. It'll generate. I don't remember how quick the original key that I got because I had to renew it and had to go through the help desk support system to, to, to renew it. It had expired, and the, the key is good for two years. I will add, the key will be good for two years. After two years, it will expire, and you'll have to renew the key. That's probably the same for um, dev and production, sandbox and production. They both will expire at the same time. And uh, when you're through testing, play around with API, and you got everything working, you want to play around with live data, you will have to contact E-Trade and activate your live key. Tell them that you're going to go live with your your software, your scripts, and you are going you want to do some live testing on the site. So anyway, that's just a quick rundown. Node.js, somebody way back for over a year ago, I guess, or more has asked me to do this and it's taken me a while to get around to getting my key, my my uh, API key renewed. And uh, I didn't realize it would take several phone calls to figure, find the right person to tell me how to do it. But you to um, to save for a quick shortcut, go into your E-Trade account and do it through the message system and put into the, the subject on the message system, uh, put in uh, the text, I need to renew my API key for, for E-Trade API something of that effect so they know that they need to route it to their IT department because that's who's going to be renewing your key and setting up your, your key for you. So the, the main people in the help desk, they, they have no idea what you're talking about. They're, they're there to tell you how to buy a stock, sell a stock, how to go into um, their videos, their tutorial videos that tells you how to trade options, stuff like that. That's, that's what the help desk is there for. So you need to go in and contact through the private message through your E-Trade. There'll be a messaging system and send a private message saying, I need my API key activated. So that being said, I think that's about as much as I could do with this. I mean, it's pretty limited as far as what the sandbox is going to do, and I'm not going to play around them with my live account. Um, if I get, if I get, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go there play around with my live account with that. I think it's enough just showing showing it in the sandbox. If somebody wants to go further with it, then the code's there, the API's there. If you need help, they have support, but you've got the contact again. You've got to do, uh, uh, they'll probably, if you're doing it for a corporate site, you're probably going to have a contact person that's going to talk to you. And they're not going to, if you're setting up a site for people to trade, they're not going to charge you for use of the key. I, I wouldn't add this as well. Uh, from what I understand, the, the charges are going to be when you make the buys and sells, when a person makes buys and sells. But the thing is, the thing is, I'm not sure how you would tie that to multiple accounts. I did read that you can set this up for multiple accounts, and there's not an example on how to do that. So... You would probably need to call technical support and ask them how to set up for multiple accounts. You probably would have a website with a login and each user would need to have their own API key and secret per user. Would probably how that would be how that work. I could see how I could program that. I would keep that information in a database and would pass it out. Uh, from a database table tied to maybe a user ID which would be a number that, that's tied to their login ID which would be like whatever login name, username they wanted to pick as long as there wasn't somebody with a similar name it would be only unique names but uh, there's multiple ways to do it if you're a, if you're a um, computer programmer computer analyst uh you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if 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 you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, you probably go need to you need to go hire a uh, a contractor or a developer to work on your site. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
And no, I'm not. Somebody's already asked me to write a trading bot. He said actually said he had the code already figured out, and he wanted me to work on the on the application, create putting the application together for him. And uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm stay busy with my my public job right now, and I've got four dogs. I have a a son, a single dad. I mean, yeah, I'm just busy. <laughs> I don't have time to mess with that. Uh, Plus, I, I'd hate I'd hate to be the person that had the bug in, in the programs messing with live money. If you're trying the trading bot and, and there's something you've not thought about, you're not coded for, and then you just lose, you just like lose the person, your your client's money, your your code just you know from a bug, from just something that goes south in the software, a trade goes south and they lose all their money. That would just you probably want to have them sign some agreement. Like, if there's a problem with the software, I'm not liable for it. If you want me to work on this, I'll work on it. But um, I'm not liable. If you lose any money off of this, I, you know, that you're you're doing this at your own risk because you, right now, as volatile as the stocks are, and the way stocks have been down this first part of the year, man, I don't know if I'd try anything like. Yet. I really don't. I really don't. I mean, uh, just buying, just creating buy and sell orders is one thing, and you're going to make, you're going to make win or lose doing the same thing through the web interface, the E-Trade interface. So that's not as risky as trying to write a trading bot and trying to predict what <laughs> what the market where it's going to go. That would that's that that gets in some some messy messy. That could be some very complicated code in the end. Anyway, with that being said, again, I do not re recommend writing a trading bot. If you do, do it at your own expense, at your own risk. I'm not saying it can't be done. There's people out there that's trying it, that's doing it. There's advertisements now on YouTube. Once you do a search on YouTube for trading bots, you're going to have advertisements trying to sell you a service to where they want to sell you an account to, to where you can use their trading bot to trade stocks for you. But you know what? It's no different than putting your money in the Fidelity or E-Trade with a professional trading team managing your account. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna. I don't have. I don't think you're gonna make any any higher gains, any better gains than, than you you would be doing something like that with a, in a uh, growth stock mutual fund or something like that. I think you're going to have about the same success. Somebody might get lucky and you might hit the big one like Tim Sykes took $12,000 and turned it into like multiple, like several million dollars. You know, uh, his bar of Memphis money, I believe, is the story. And, and that can happen. You can be, if you've got to be in the right place in the right trade at the right time. That's all I can say. But um, it is a very big risk. You are gambling. It is a it is a gamble. But I'm not going to say you can't do it. But I do not recommend that you do try to ride a Tay Raiden bot. I think it's safer. And I might you know I might get ambitious. I, I, if I get some free time, I might play around with this. I might make some trades. I might buy some AT and T stock or something like that. And maybe do a video later down the road. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to think about it. So, um, that being said, that's how you set up the API. That's how you get it running. There's going to be a few errors that will come up. You saw that one error that come up and didn't seem to be nothing, but it finally completed. Um, there's going to be about six modules you're going to have to install that don't get installed with Node.js. That I'm going to put the commands down in the uh, description down below. And um, that's pretty much it. Anyway, I appreciate you watching my video. I hope this has helped you. I hope this is, um, you know, uh, give you a little insight if you're trying to do something with this API or trying to get set up to use this API. Because, again, they they have very minimal. They, they assume that you know that you're a developer. You know what you're doing. And you probably want to you probably want to go take a, maybe a Node.js course if you're going to be modifying the code. You probably want to know a little bit about Node.js. Um, I mean, 
it's nothing wrong with learning as you go, but I would test, 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 and I would test because, you know, if you go playing with your live money, your live account, I think if you stick to the framework they give you with this sample, with the API, if you stick with this framework, I don't think it will go wrong because it's pretty much just creating an order to buy some stock. It'll make the order. The order will sit there till it executes. You can cancel the order. You can um, you can um, create a sell order. It'll sit there till your sell price hits, and then it'll execute just like it would on the website. It's just going to function just like the interface on the website, buying and selling stocks, OTC stocks, or NASDAQ. So uh, there, there you go. It was a quick and dirty. Again, thank you. Keep it real. Keep the roof over your head. Keep food on the table. Keep your lights on, your AC on. Keep clothes on your kids. Don't let them run around naked. Don't let those kids run around naked. And um, be responsible with your trading. Don't uh, don't be reckless with your uh, with buying and some following people's trades. That's just uh, I've lost money doing that way. I made some money, but I've also lost some money, and I don't want I don't want you folks to lose money because again, it's a gamble. You are taking a risk. You set and look at the price action, look at the charts, see what the stock's doing. Buy low when it dips. If it's if it's going up, don't buy in the peak. If you start chasing uh, Twitter tweets and stuff, look at the chart and see if you're fixing to buy into the peak. If you're in the peak, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because the price could fall and you could be a bag holder and you got to sit on that stock till it comes back up. So that's just a word of warning, okay? I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a stock advisor. I'm just Cherry D in Tennessee and I like to talk about stocks and I'm also a computer programmer and I like to mess with code and that's why I did this video. So anyway, you folks have a great weekend. I hope you've had a good week. I hope this next week is a great weekend. Uh, I, I wish you the best. I wish you uh, profitable trades. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye. Bella's got to be right up under me, don't you, Bella? Oh, my word. Cloudy day. Looks like it may rain. clouds out over the valley the East Tennessee Valley and Bella she's just happy to be around <laughs>